Marsha P. Johnson. The P in her name stood for pay it no mind. When people got, as she put it, too nosy about her gender, she would tell them to pay it no mind. At a time when there wasn't the language around gender and gender identity that there is today, Marsha simply said, pay it no mind. But it seemed to take on a different meaning, as for so long a time, no mind was paid to the huge contribution Marsha P. Johnson made to the LGBT plus liberation movement. When you hear the name Marsha P. Johnson today, it's most likely to be accompanied by she threw the first brick at Stonewall. Except, according to Marsha herself, she didn't. It is said that when the Stonewall Inn was raided, she proclaimed, I got my civil rights, throwing a shot glass at a mirror. This became known as the shot glass heard around the world. The jury is still out on who threw the first brick or whether there even was a first brick. But I don't think it matters. One person throwing one brick isn't an uprising. An uprising is when a whole group of people, frustrated and angry, stand in solidarity and say no more. The Stonewall Uprising wasn't a brick thrown on one night, it was a rebellion that lasted most intensely for three nights and resulted in a series of spontaneous demonstrations and marches throughout the gay neighbourhoods of Greenwich Village for a week afterwards. Known as the riots that sparked the gay revolution. It was a movement, not a moment. A movement that Marsha was to play a central part in throughout her life. Marsha, alongside her close friend Sylvia Rivera, was one of the main players in the gay, gay liberation movement. In 1970, Marsha and Sylvia formed Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, or STAR. And they were stars. Homeless sex workers themselves, they provided housing and support to homeless transgender youth. This was the first programme of its kind. They got a building at 213 Second Avenue where they fed and clothed Peter, people. Later, as well as their chapter in New York, they had one in Chicago, California and the UK. The most vulnerable, standing in solidarity with the most vulnerable and providing them safe haven. Starr described themselves as a revolutionary army opposed to the system. In their manifesto of 1970, among their demands were an end to homophobia, racism, incarceration, police harassment and job discrimination. All oppressed people should have free education, health care, food, transportation and housing. We want a revolutionary government where all people are free, not this government who spends millions of dollars to go to the moon and lets the poor Americans starve to death. For so long, trans women of colour have both suffered the greatest injustices, homelessness, joblessness, personal violence and state violence, and have simultaneously been the vanguards, the voices at the front of our movements, fighting for all, only to be dropped, forgotten about or vilified by others in the LGBT plus community when they themselves have become more acceptable to the mainstream, when they have been assimilated. But others, like Marsha, who never would have wanted assimilation, have not. At Pride in 1973, attempts were made to keep Sylvia Rivera from speaking by the very people for whom she and Marsha had fought so hard. But undeterred, she took the stage and she took the microphone, yet again to fight for others. While some of the more respectable crowd booed she stood up and said, I've been trying to get here all day for your gay brothers and your gay sisters in jail. 
They've been beaten and raped. They do not write to the women's movement. They do not write to the men. They write to Star because we're trying to do something for them. I have been beaten. I have had my nose broken. I have been thrown in jail. I have lost my job. I have lost my apartment for the gay liberation. And you all treat me this way? The people at Star House are trying to do something for all of us. Not just men and women that belong in a white middle class white club. She ended her speech by calling for revolution now and leading the crowd who had started by booing her in a mass chant of gay power. Despite the triumphant ending to her speech, being booed and kept off the stage by the very people whose liberation she had thought for was devastating to Sylvia. She went home desolate and she attempted suicide. But it was Marsha P. Johnson who found her and saved her life, another in the long list of lives saved in some way by Marsha. Marsha dedicated so much of her life to supporting others. Despite being homeless and suffering with her mental health, she dedicated her time to supporting the dispossessed. She was known to walk down Christopher Street giving away her possessions. If someone said that they liked her scarf or her hat or any article of clothing, she'd say, there you go, sweetie, and she'd hand it to them. She would, as she put it, hustle so that the youth of Star House didn't have to. Because of her generosity to others and her work with homeless youth, she was known as the Saint of Christopher Street. Her clothes were flamboyant and mostly sourced from rubbish bins. But despite not being able to afford real drag clothing, she was always dripping in jewels and flowers. She said, I was a nobody from Nowheresville until I became a drag queen. She became known as the drag mother to other struggling youth. Andy Warhol admired her so much he featured her in a series of prominent portraits of trans women and drag queens. And she became a successful performer. Audiences loved her. They loved her charm. They loved her charisma. They loved her characterful singing. And as well as her work with prisoners and with homeless youth, Johnson was an advocate for those with AIDS. Marsha never backed down for the fight for LGBT plus liberation. She said that she never saw Pride as a party and that as long as gay people don't have their rights across America, there is no reason for a celebration. She thought an injustice against one is an injustice against all. And the fight was not over until all of us are liberated. Marsha died in 1992. Her body was found in the Hudson River with a hole in her head. Police said it was suicide, but many of her friends have argued that this was not the case and argue this to this day. Attacks on trans people and gay people were high and the police were known for not caring about their lives or their deaths. Today, so much has changed because of people like Marsha and the legacy of that shot glass that sparked a revolution. But so much hasn't changed. So many of the fights are still the same and the Star Manifesto of 1970 is still as relevant in 2020. We're witnessing another global mass movement in Black Lives Matter and the protests around the world sparked in part by the brutal murder at the hands of police of George Floyd. Alongside this, Black Trans Lives Matter protests have happened in multiple places across the world. Since the murder of George Floyd, 10 trans people have been murdered in the US. They are disproportionately Black trans women. Their names are Tony McDade, a Black trans man shot by the police in Florida, May 27th. Dominique Fells, 
a black trans woman stabbed, beaten and dismembered in Philadelphia, June 9th. Rhea Milton, a black trans woman shot at Liberty Township, Ohio, June 9th. Selena Reyes Hernandez, a trans woman shot in Chicago on May 31st. Brayla Stone, a 17 year old black trans woman. Her body was discovered in a car in Little Rock on June 25th. Mercy Mack, a black trans woman, shot in Dallas, Texas, June 30th. Shaggy Peters, a black trans woman murdered in Louisiana on July 1st. Bree Black, a black trans woman shot Florida on July 3rd. Summer Taylor, killed when a car drove into the crowd as she was participating in the Black Femme March in solidarity with Black Lives Matter in Washington on July 4th. And Marilyn Cazares, a Latina trans woman killed in Fa California, found dead in an abandoned building on July 13th. Many of these victims were misgendered, dead named by the police and media. After the murder of Bree Black, the director of the Human Rights Commission's Trans Justice Initiative said, these killings are being fueled by the deadly combination of racism and transphobia and they must cease. We must come together as a community and demand justice for those who were taken from us. But their stories are unheard. We are paying them no mind. Marsha said the P in her name stood for pay it no mind when asked about her gender identity. I wonder, now that we have so much more language, what Marsha would say today. Would she proudly define herself differently or would she still tell us to pay it no mind? I would like to refrain, hopefully with Marsha's blessing, pay it no mind today. And I don't want to send out a message of silence. Marsha certainly wouldn't approve of that. She would be on the front line of the current protests. She would still be fighting the injustices against the most vulnerable in our communities. As long as all people don't have their rights, there would still be no cause to celebrate. She would still, in the words of the Star Manifesto, be fighting for an end to homophobia, racism, incarceration, police harassment and jo job discrimination for all oppressed people. We must honour her by standing in solidarity with all oppressed people, with Black Lives Matter, with Black Trans Lives Matter, with those still imprisoned and murdered by the state. Pride still needs to be a rebellion an uprising whilst our brothers, our sisters, our siblings are being demonised by the media, lied about by bigots and murdered by men who are raised in a society which views their lives, their loves, their bodies as expendable, as worth less. But I want to reframe it this way for trans youth. I know what it feels like to grow in, up in a world which teaches you that you're wrong. And thanks to the despicable actions of our media and our politicians, you're having it pretty bad right now. But you have a beautiful community of gender non-conformers, of trans men and women and non-binary siblings and drag queens and drag kings of people who see you for who you are and will give everything to this fight. We are your family. We stand in solidarity with you and we will not give up until all are liberated. There is nothing wrong with you. So when you hear those messages of hate, in your heart, in your soul, pay it no mind. Expect better. Demand better, because you deserve better. We deserve better, and we will all demand that. Be Marsha, 
Be Sylvia. Be generous and kind, but be bold and unashamed, and they will not break you. Be Star. Marsha P. Johnson. The P in her name stood for pay it no mind. Marsha, we do pay you mind. We recognise the rights that we have because you stood up for all our civil rights. We stand on your shoulders and on the shoulders of those who fought alongside you. And we will continue your fight until all oppressed people are liberated. Oh uh -huh.